If you ever played Super Mario Maker, you might have noticed the cool effect that happens when Mario collects a key. After he grabs it, there is then this sort of invisible elastic leash that forces the key to follow wherever Mario goes until he ultimately uses the key to open the door. I really like this look and want to recreate it in Unity to potentially be used in an upcoming game that I'm working on. So I went ahead and opened up my existing project that contains a lot of the elements seen in a Mario-like side-scrolling game. Using a character controller that I built, I'm able to move around my scene by running and jumping between platforms. Additionally, it's important to point out that I have another script that moves my camera around so that my character always remains in view. And then in Photoshop, I created a key and a door similar to what you'd find in Super Mario World. I'm going to be using this project as an example, but everything learned here can be applied to any Unity project. So with everything in place, I can now show you how I recreated this effect in Unity. For the first step, I'm going to go ahead and drag my key onto my scene, and then I'm just going to position this in a place that I could easily interact with it with my character. A simple way to get this key to follow and bounce with the character's movement is to use a spring joint 2D. And the way this basically works is that you can set an object for this to be attached to it, and it will work sort of like a spring, giving it an elastic bouncing effect. So if we add a spring joint 2D to our key, you'll notice exactly what I mean. And this also adds a rigid body 2D component to our object, so let's just make sure to set the gravity to zero so it doesn't cause our object to fall through the floor. If we press play in our project, I can show you a couple of things. The first thing we should do is uncheck auto configure distance. This is because we want our objects to snap to each other. Then to get this to follow our player, we must assign it to our player's rigid body 2D component. And after doing that, you can tell that this moves both our player and our key object to spring next to each other. And of course, this is a problem because we don't want our keys movement to alter the movement of our character. So to fix this, I'm going to create a backpack child object for our character. For this object, I'm just going to label it backpack and then I'm going to move it so it's slightly behind my character. Then I'm going to add a rigid body 2D component to it. To make it so that this rigid body is unaffected by other objects, like a swinging key for example, I'm going to adjust the body type to be kinematic. Now if I go back to my key and select backpack as my connected rigid body, I should see that my player doesn't move at all when the key swings. But as you can see, this isn't quite the effect we want yet. So to fix this, let's lower the distance all the way down to almost zero, which brings our key a lot closer to our object. Although now when we move our object, our key starts spinning uncontrollably, but that can easily be solved by increasing our linear drag. I'm going to go ahead and set this value to four. And now this looks a lot closer to the effect we saw in Super Mario Maker. So now let's set this up with code so that upon impact of the key, it will start following our character. To do that, let's add a circle collider 2D to our key object and let's check the box next to where it says is trigger. This will alert us via code whenever our character makes impact with our circle. And with that set up, we are ready to create a script for our key. To do that, let's right click in our project window and select create and then C sharp script. Let's just label this key script. Then up at the top, let's create a reference for our spring joint by writing private spring joint 2D and then let's label this spring. Next, in our start function, let's define the spring joint 2D by writing spring equals get component and then spring joint 2D. This allows us to modify our spring joint 2D component via script, but for now all we want to do is disable it at the start of the scene and enable it once our character collides with it. So to disable it, simply write spring.enabled equals false. Then we want to use a built-in function to detect when our character enters the trigger collider. This can be used by writing private void on trigger enter 2D and make sure that is spelled exactly as I do or it won't work. And then for me, this automatically populates a parameter of a collider 2D called collision. We're going to ignore that for now, but inside this function, let's just put spring.enabled equals true. So now when we go back and press play, we should see that when our character runs into the key, that it connects the spring joint and forces the key to then follow our character around the scene. Now to enhance the script, I'm going to add a few things. Firstly, I want to set up this key object as a prefab by dragging it back into the project window. This will allow me to clone this key to be used as many times as I want throughout the scene. 
And to make sure the key always binds to the character, we're going to connect it with our key script. But first, I want to tag our backpack object. To do that, let's select it from the scene hierarchy and open up the tag dropdown. I already have a tag for backpack, but to create this, simply select add tag and then click the little plus symbol and write backpack. Then repeat those last steps to make sure the backpack object is tagged as backpack. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and tag our player object as the defaulted player tag. We'll need this later. And now we can go back in our script and make some modifications. The first thing we want to do is connect our spring object to our backpack object. To do this, let's first create a reference for the backpack by writing game object backpack equals and then write game object dot find with tag and in parentheses put backpack. This searches our scene and returns the object tagged as backpack. Then we can use this reference to connect our spring joint by writing spring dot connected body equals backpack dot get component and then rigid body 2D. And then the last thing we want to do is modify our on trigger enter function to only connect with our key when it collides with our player object. This prevents other colliders from triggering the key. To do this, let's wrap our spring.enable line with an if statement by writing if collision.gameObject equals player. And now that we have that done, we can go ahead and add multiple keys throughout our scene for our character to collect. And if done properly, each one should follow our character around the screen once collected. And now that just leaves us with our door script. For this video, I'm going to keep this part simple. Quickly, I'm going to drag my sprite onto the scene and add a box collider 2D to it. Again, I'm going to check the box where it says is trigger. Then I'm going to duplicate this object and drag a second door somewhere else in my scene. My objective here, like in Mario, is that when my character collides with a door and I press up, either on my keyboard or on my joystick, I will teleport to the other door. So to do that, let's create another C Sharp script called door and let's open it in the editor. For the script, we will need two references. The first will be a reference for the other door, so let's write public game object and then connected door. The second reference will be for our player, so let's write private game object player. Then in our start function, we can define our player reference using our player tag from earlier. To do this, let's write player equals game object dot find with tag and then put player in parentheses. And then like in our last script, we want to use a built in trigger function. But for this one, we want to use on trigger stay 2D, which gets called each frame an object collides with our trigger. Then like in our last script, let's create an if statement to make sure we are colliding with our player object by writing if collision dot game object equals player. And then if it's true, we want to check to see if we are pressing the up button. We can do that by writing if input dot get access raw and then in parentheses write vertical and then a double equal sign and then put one. This basically detects vertical input on either a joystick access or an up arrow key on our keyboard. We check to see if it equals a positive one because that indicates the up direction. If we wanted to detect the down direction, we would use a negative one here. And then lastly, all we need to do is set our player's position equal to the position of our second door. To do that, just write player.transform.position equals connectedDoor.transform.position. And now when we go back into Unity, all we need to do to test this out is connect our doors in the inspector. Make sure to connect both doors to each other. And now when we press play, we should see that we can move between doors by standing on top of it and pressing the up direction. Although, if you're like me, you might realize that if you hold the up direction too long, your character jumps back and forth between doors. Instead, we want to stay in the door until we release the up key and press it again. Back in our script, we want to create a public boolean called teleport, and by default, let's set this to false. We will use this boolean to block transportation until the up key is released. And then let's write if teleported, and then put two ampersand symbols to indicate a second argument and then put input.getAccessRaw, and then in parentheses put vertical. And we want to check if it's less than a positive one. This basically checks if after we transported, we let go of the up direction. If that happens, we want to set our teleported boolean equal to false. And then this next part might be a little confusing, but basically we want to use the first door script to set the teleported boolean of the second door. We can do this by writing connected door dot get component and then door and then teleport it equals true. This takes our connected door reference, finds the script attached to it called door, which by the way is the current script, and then sets the value for the transported equal to true. 
And now to block the player from transporting when this value is set to true, let's modify our if statement by writing two ampersand symbols and then an exclamation point and then put teleported. This indicates that we only want to teleport if the value for teleported equals false. And now that our key follows our door and our door transports us to a new location, the only thing left to do is to restrict this door from teleporting unless we have a certain amount of keys. This is as easy as creating a script to keep track of how many keys we've collected. Using the principles covered in this video, you should have no problem figuring it out. Or go ahead and sign up for my Patreon where this week I'll cover that plus how to add gizmo icons to your doors so you know which door goes where. And if you enjoyed this video and would like us to make more, please help us out by pressing the like button and subscribing to this channel so you don't miss any future videos.